Welcome to MR8 Essential Training Series, and this is a lesson one, uh, studying new cases. Uh, I am assuming that you already have read at least two chapters of MR8 User Guide. You have read Chapter 1, Program Basics, Chapter 2, Repository. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume those basic knowledge about navigating through MR8 that these les lessons are in sequence. So you cannot jump around because these are designed from lesson one to go to lesson two, go to lesson three, and so on. So when you are taking or viewing these lessons, please follow in numerical sequence. Now, when you start a new case in MR8, I strongly suggest you first search for duplicates meaning that make sure that you do not have that particular case you're about to enter already in MR8. And that is the one way that a lot of people are adding a lot of duplicate cases to the system and uh, without realizing it. And uh, there is no merge cases in MR8, so you need to be very careful. You also need to upload any files or forms that pertain to the case to the repository, such as order forms, and we'll see that in a minute. You also like to make uh, uh, notes, such as saving the emails from the client into the notes log. And you also need to specify billing information for each party, such as uh, bill to, such as an insurance company, name of adjuster, claim number, all these things. And also, the billing rate table need to be specified for each party. Now, unlike MR7, MR8 allows you to enter this billing information for e each party rather than one only one for the entire case. Let's say that you have a case that client ordered a three locations first. So let's say uh, part one was a memorial home and hospital Part two was a Sugar Land Imaging Center. Part three was Walgreens. And that's what client orders. So I set up a case. I enter three locations and, and I was happy. About a month later, client uh, emails me or calls in an additional location. They found uh, Dr. Jacob Smith's office. Now normally in MR8, this should have been an add-on and uh, part number four. But since you have not searched for the existing case and you didn't know about Lee versus Big Farmer case before, you just enter a brand new case and set this part up as a part number one. Now you have Lee versus Big Pharma case entered twice, one with the three locations, the second one with only one location. So that's not the way to do it. The best practice is to set up this new location under the existing case as a part number four. And this is called add-on. This way you can send out legal papers just on the location number four and all these things will follow through. And you only have a single case for all those four locations rather than duplicate cases, which can cause a lot of problems. So this is a very critical, important. So let's see how this will work in practice. So let's go to a uh, function called case manager in MR8. And we're going, we're going to enter a brand new case. You go to orders and there is the function called case manager. And you can also hit F2 since we will be using this function so much. You can just memorize that and hit F2 key. Now remember I said the very first thing to do is search for that particular case, if that exists or not in the system. Today I got an email from a client or secretary. They are ordering a, a three locations uh, on a case called Lee versus Big Pharma. So now you, you are tempted to hit this new button first and then get set up a new case, but again, Let's go ahead and search for it. So I'm going to enter a keyword big because, you know, Lee, there will be hundreds of Lees in there. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick a, a, a key word such as a big or pharma and search. And uh, well, as you can see, we do not have any case in our system that contains the word big anywhere. Good. So now I can safely go ahead and add a new case. So let's go to new. And uh, first thing we need to do is uh, 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 select a client by clicking the binoculars button who's ordering this case, which ob obviously that's your client. So let's say Mr. Daniel Berg's office emailed me today. So we are going to select Daniel Berg. As we select the contact, the firm name comes up, their warning messages shows up also. Just simply take a mouse there to see the warning. In the order by, in a drop down, will be listed assistance that you have entered for Mr. Daniel Berg. So let's say Marianne sent in an email today. The case name, this is the, a brief caption. So you want it to be very brief. This, this is what will show up on your, all your documents and on invoices and statements. So let's say Lee versus Big Pharma Inc. is the brief caption. Case number, that's the court assigned cause number. So let's say uh, 2008 dash California, whatever. And then this is a filed in a state of Texas. Uh, it's not a federal case. Now, since it's a state case, I'm going to say the county is the Harris County and Judicial District Court is 151st. Now, if this happens to be a federal case, then I'll be entering district and division instead of county or court. The notation is something that you can use the abbreviation to something special about this case. Uh, if this was a, a entire case is a rush job, you can also check the mark there. You can also assign this to a particular processor. So let's say in, in your firm, each case is assigned to a, a case coordinator, uh, or sometimes it's called processor. So I'm going to assign this to Alicia, uh, if I can find her. So there's an Alicia Smith, so she's one of my case coordinators and she will be handling this case. Now the order date will be automatically assigned as today's date. Now this is the order date of this entire case. Later on when we enter each location, each location will have their own separate order date which is the order date we'll be going by. This order date is simply tell us that this case was initially set up on July 28th. If you have a, a, some kind of a warning message for the entire case, then you can enter it here, such as the, this is the first of 500 patients uh, class action lawsuit, you know, things like that. So records of, uh, this is the patient name. So let's say patient is the Yong B. Lee, and he is the plaintiff. He's the guy complaining about something. Now, this is where you will set up his home address. So if, if your state requires the home address according to HIPAA rule of the patient, then you can enter it here. Uh, social security number. So, and uh, his date of birth, it's uh, 1953. Now the authorized by, there are two choices here. Uh, either by patient with an authorization or we have to uh, serve subpoena to get record. So default is a subpoena, so you can change that. Uh, additional information, you might or might not use this field. Uh, trial date, if it's known, uh, when you can start working on this particular case, is a start date. Uh, waiver date uh, in Texas, that's either can be used as a waiver starting date or waiver out of waiver date. Um, we have received this by email. This is a, uh, a med medical uh, malpractice case. So these are all defaults which you can change later. Let me go to forms first. And what I'm going to do here 
is that in, in for example in Texas uh, we have a lot of legal forms and uh, on the top of the legal papers we have two styles there's a style of the case and then the court style so on the left hand side is the style of the case and the right hand side of the top of the document is what's called court style so here I'm going to put in uh, the way I want to uh, show the style on my document. So I like to spread it out. I want I like to center it and use the line one, four, and seven if I don't have a long, you know, style. So okay, but you know, you you are provided seven lines. You can you can you know enter and use any of these lines to accommodate your full style or full case style. Now, the court style, since I have already entered Harris County 151st uh, District Court, all I need to do is simply click Assemble Court and that will make up the court style based on a template that you already have set up. Now, we provide a default template but you, you are able to change if you don't like the way the court style comes up then you can go ahead and change that template in the setup so that every time you hit this button this uh, court style will be assembled differently with that entered I'm going to back go back to the additional information and I'll also hit this button assemble case and this will give me a full case name now at this point we have a couple more things I like to do. Uh, first of all, I like to uh, upload all the documents that client sent me, such as an order form, to the repository. And um, the second thing is that I like to make some notes, maybe copy the email contents and so on. But I don't see those tabs here yet. Well, you don't see them because you have not saved this case yet. So first thing you need to do is hit save. Now do not hit save and close because then you have to come back in again. So save will save the case, issue an order number, and will stay in this window, give you more tabs. So go ahead and hit the save button. So now this case is now order number 5063. And as you can see, I got four more tabs come up. So let's do repository first. Mary Ann, the secretary, emailed me. She didn't want to type all the locations and attorneys in the email. She already had the uh, Word documents prepared or PDF. So all she said was, this is the order and uh, I attached the order form. So I downloaded it. Now typically up to now people been printing that and you guys will have a, some kind of a folder created and you put the, that piece of order form inside of the folder, filed it into a filing cabinet and we like to have an access to that particular order form immediately six months later six years later so what we're going to do is that in the repository we'll go ahead and new and then say select files so that's the one i just downloaded from the email so i'm going to go open and i'm going to change the file type to order form and um, i like to go ahead and publish it now what that publish button does is that in the future if you activate MR Web for your client, your client can ac start accessing all these things online. So order form since it's something that client sent me, I have no problem of disclosing it to the client. So client can also view it. So that's the reason I publish it. Now you might have uh, some internal documents that you might not want to publish it or make it public. Well then you will not check this button. It will be just only for the internal consumption, not for the public use. So I'm going to save. And just like that, this order form is now permanently archived under this case 5063.